Hey folks, in this episode we're going to learn how to make this cloud dome. Um, it can be used in any of your scenes, it reacts to light, it especially works well with the sky texture that comes with Blender. So without further ado, let's get to it. So we'll open up Blender. Um, this is just a basic demo scene, so it's literally just a plane with um, some icospheres orbited in a circle um, just for objects of interest and also I've set up my world um, with a sky texture so if you want to copy these settings you can I've just got a background with a strength of 0.2 you go through all these settings here um, I'm, I haven't got my screencast keys on because it keeps crashing blender so I'll try and explain uh, the key strikes that I'm hitting so I'm going to push N, go to my N panel. I'm going to change the focal length uh, down to about 24 mil, just so we have got more of a broader um, line of view or field of view. I'll also go to my camera settings. I'm going to set that to 24. Yep, that's set to 24. So if I go into rendered mode, this is going to be in cycles, by the way, guys. So if I go to uh, rendered view now, um, we'll see the scene for what it is. So it's basically just this scene as is at the moment so the focus isn't on the scene you can use this cloud dome for any of your blender scenes so I'm not going to show you how to construct this it's pretty basic stuff guys so what I'm going to do so I'm going to hit shift A add mesh UV sphere I'm going to go up to the settings on the UV sphere um, I'm going to hit times 2 because I want it to be 64 segments by 32 rings so I'm going to go to times 2 on the rings and that will take it up to 32 I'm then going to bring the scale up to say about 200 so that should encompass the um, plane that I've got there the plane is just a standard plane with a subdivision surface attached to it um, I'm going to hit 1 on numpad to go into front view I'm going to go into x-ray mode I'm going to select the UV sphere go into edit mode I'm going to box select all these vertices here and hit X delete vertices from here I'll go back into my shader ed editor I'm now going to click new material uh, from this material we're going to want quite a few nodes um, pretty straightforward though so it shouldn't be too complicated I'll increase the size of the shader editor so we can see what we're doing oh I'm also going to hit Z shade smooth on the um, UV sphere so from here I'm going to let's say um, let me just check my notes okay so I'm going to add shift a add shader add shader I'm then going to shift a add shader transparent shader the transparent shader is going to be on the bottom socket um, actually that's wrong that should be a translucent sorry so I'm gonna we're gonna use the transparent shader as well but I'll just drag this up to here so the translucent shader is going into the add shader on the bottom socket I'm then going to add a shader mix shader and that's going to go in between the add shader and the material output and then I'm going to put the transparent into the top socket of the mix shader like so um, and we're going to drive the factor with a couple of noise textures um, one of them is going to be offset using a mapping node um, it's pretty straightforward so let's add a texture noise texture I'm going to duplicate that noise texture I'm then going to ooh, let's just drag this over here give us a bit more room I'm then going to hit shift A add color mix color I'm going to set the mix type to linear light I'm going to keep the factor at um, 0.5 but I'll, I'm going to drag that factor from the top noise texture into socket A and this one into socket B um, the detail I'm going to set to 8 on both of them 
and a roughness of around 0.6 maybe a tiny bit of distortion as well 0.05 um, we'll do the same for this one so that's 8 0.6 0 0.05 I'm going to leave it on 3D you can have it on 4D if you like I'm also going to add a input so shift a input and value so we're going to add a value node and that's going to drive the scale I'm going to set it at, say I don't know one just for now we can change that in a minute so now I'm going to add two mapping nodes so that will be vector mapping so that one's going to be for the top one and then we'll duplicate that and this is going to be for the bottom um, I'm then going to add a texture coordinate which should be yep well, shift a input texture coordinate and they're both going to be using the object coordinates for the vector um, the bottom mapping node um, this is what I mean the texture the bottom texture is going to be offset slightly on the scale so let's change the scale of all three of these on the X Y and Z it's not letting me drag it for some reason so 1.1 1.1 1.1 I'm then going to drag the result into the factor of the mix shader. Um, it, we, to, uh, the, the next move that I'm going to do, so it's basically shift and then right drag on your mouse, right click drag, and it creates these little um, pinpoints here which we can use to neaten up our shader. Um, but to, uh, but to use these uh, on the noodles, you're going to have to go to edit mode, preferences, um, go to add-ons, and then type in node, and then activate the node wrangler, and then once you've clicked the checkbox on node wrangler, click this button here, and then save to preferences, and that way the add-on will always be active every time you open up Blender. Um, it's quite handy really, because it just makes things a lot easier to read. Um, also, in between these two uh, noodle points, I'm going to hit Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp, and this will give us a bit of control over the transparency. On the principal B BSDF, um, we're going to turn subsurface up to 0.5, we're going to turn the specular right down to 0, and the roughness to 1. Um, we're also going to add another noise texture in a minute, well, actually I'll just add that now. I won't connect it up just yet to the because we're going to use this one to drive the bump um, so I'm going to shift and then right strike or right click drag kind of thing so we'll add that there I'll then add shift a vector bump I'll add the factor into the height um, with the bump node um, I might reduce this down to say 1 and give a detail of around 2.5 um, maybe 0.1 on distortion um, that should do for now the distance is going to have to come way up on this because it's quite a large object so from here let's just see what we've got okay so I go into render view Okay, so the noise is too fine at the moment for us to see, so we're going to reduce this down to say 0 0.05. Here we go, we're starting to get some results here. And then drag this, and as you can see, your clouds start appearing. It's quite a good technique, this one, because it actually reacts to the light. I mean, it's not three dimensional, um, but when we've where we've offset the bottom scale um, you can see the original output so if I drag that to zero it's uh, this noise texture and I drag it all the way out to the right and it becomes this one so if I go 0 0.5 it's in, in between the two and um, it gives you the illusion of a bit more depth I'll also 
change the um, interpolation on the color ramp to B spline. And once I've added that, I'm going to add another flag on the color ramp. We'll drag that back here and we'll turn this one to pitch black. So then we can uh, really crunch those values in. You don't want it too close because if you, if you go too, if you bring these flags too close, it gives like a really harsh edge on your cloud, so it's not very realistic. So just give it a nice bit of fall off there. Maybe increase this uh, white value. Um, am I really happy with that scale? Might go to 0.1. There, that's uh, way too much. We'll go back to 0 0.05. There we go. Maybe it's a bit too cloudy in this scene here. So we'll just take a bit more cloud off by dragging these black flags to the right. Now we're going to work on the bump. It should be fairly straightforward. We just plug the bump straight into there. I'm going to put this on one, no, say 500 for the minute, just so we can see what bump we're getting for our money. Um, not much is happening here. Let's change the scale. Okay, the scale's way too high, so I'm going to go 0 0.025. Turn this up even more, so 1,000. Oh, hang on, I forgot to plug the normal into the normal of the translucent. bump happening here so that's actually not enough so 0.1 maybe there we go we're getting a bit more bump for our money uh, let's just drag this up a minute just as uh, here we go we we'll start seeing the values now you can see the bump appearing a lot more so 0.2 maybe okay I'm happy with that but I'm gonna drag the value right back down to say 250 still too high maybe 100 still a bit too high so we'll go 10 still too high 2 nope maybe 5 you're gonna have to play around with these values it depends on the size of your scene um, I'm kinda happy with that yep I'm happy with that so in essence that's the um, cloud dome for your scene. Pretty straightforward to make. Um, and once you've made this asset, you can mark it as an asset and um, import it into any other scene. Uh, do take into consideration this is just the bare bones, like it's the bare minimum that you need for the clouds. You can add a lot more um, in the shader editor uh, to improve the look of your clouds. So, you know, I do encourage you to do that and experiment a bit. But yeah, that's it in a nutshell. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can support my channel by smashing the like button. If you want to see more up and coming tutorials, um, hit the subscribe. Thanks for watching.